It's time for Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton, breaking down game-changing plays, momentum-shifting moves, can't-miss matchups, the inside scoop on the team and what's next for the Knolls as they look to make another tournament run. ABC 27 presents Inside Seminole Basketball with Leonard Hamilton, live from Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee. Sponsored by these businesses. Now the Welcome to Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Uh, for those of you watching ABC 27, come on aboard. We've got some highlights to show. We've got a lot of wins to talk about as Florida State extends the longest current win streak in the Atlantic Coast Conference to six in a row, including five in a row over ACC opponents. How about that? Say hello to our studio audience here at Glory Days. We're here on Monday nights. And the food is really good, right? Let me hear you. Yeah, there you go. We... We knew that. I've got my order in. I can't wait, but i got to wait for an hour, okay? We're talking Florida State basketball. Head coach Leonard Hamler will be here momentarily. But during the week, since the last time we visited here at Glory Days, FSU has knocked off Duke in overtime, beaten North Florida by 13 at home, a 12-noon game. And thank you, fans, for coming out to the arena, the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. 20, 2088, the official attendance announced. And I think it was more than that, but they made a lot of noise, and Florida State beat uh, UNF from Jacksonville. That's the seventh time we beat them, and that was expected, but thanks to the fans that came out. And then on Saturday, we go down to Coral Gables, Florida. We had beaten Miami 11 days before by one point on our home court, and you know they wanted a little revenge. You bet they did, and it's a great rivalry. It dates back to 1950, and Florida State had a phenomenal first half. We'll talk to Coach about that first half because we shot the lights out. 60% shooting from the floor. It built a huge 24-point lead. But it was sort of like a Charles Dickens novel called A Tale of Two Cities. It was a tale of two halves. And Florida State shot well in the first half. Miami shot better in the second half, and we win by one, 61 to 60, in Coral Gables. And that is our ninth win in a row over the Miami Hurricanes. How about that? Shout it out, seven goals, nine in a row over the Miami Hurricanes. Looking ahead, Florida State plays Wednesday at Georgia Tech. That's a 9 o'clock game on the ACC Network. And then on Saturday afternoon at 3 o'clock, Florida State hosts Virginia Tech. I guess you could say it's a battle of the Techs this week. Georgia Tech Wednesday, Virginia Tech on Saturday at 3 o'clock at the Donald L. Tucker Center. Our, our, our fans have been great, particularly for Saturday games. We have sold out the arena. It's not a sellout yet. There are still tickets. But I'll promise you this, the students are going to gobble up every single student ticket. We'll be in that end zone to our left, and they'll be making noise when the texters walk into that court on Saturday afternoon. A couple of other things. Florida State now has won three one-point ball games. Three one-point ball games. We are told by the Atlantic Coast Co Conference office today that that is the most one-point wins in the nation by a college basketball team, any division. One-point wins, three of them, two over Miami, one over Duke in overtime, and uh, it just doesn't get a whole lot better. And by the way, that overtime win, that overtime win against Duke was our 13th consecutive overtime victory, extending Florida State's national record of most consecutive wins in overtime. It's just incredible. I thought it was big. We got 11, then we got 12, and uh, along comes Duke, and we... Took them out to the old ACC <laughs> woodshed, beat them by one. And oh, by the way, we have to play Duke in mid-February up at Cameron Indoor Stadium. You think the Cameron crazies are going to go crazy in that ball game? Let's see if we can sweep the Duke Blue Devils like we just swept the Miami Hurricanes. Coaches versus cancer is this week. And you, if you're watching on television all week long, uh, the, the primetime games, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the evening, and the, the matinees on Saturday, the coaches will be wearing sneakers proudly and uh, raising awareness to the Coaches versus Cancer uh, campaign. And uh, uh, Coach will talk about his family. His, his family's been affected severely by cancer, and uh, I think my family has been too, and probably your family has. But Coaches versus Cancer is a huge week to raise awareness and raise money to fight cancer. And speaking of fighting cancer, uh, probably the, the biggest name in college basketball, Dick Vitale, is struggling and taking therapy and hoping to get well. He is not doing live broadcast, uh, at least for the time being. He hopes to be back in February or at least ready for March Madness. Dick, get well. We love you. We appreciate you. And if you're watching on ABC 27 or listening on the Seminole a Radio Network presented by Learfield, Dick Vitale, get well. You're a great, great spokesman for the game of basketball. Our special guest tonight. 
will be Mike Bradley. Mike Bradley has been with Leonard Hamilton since uh, well, since Leonard got here in 2002-03 season. Mike is the strength and conditioning coach. He may he may spend more time with the basketball athletes than anybody else, and I'm including coaches because every day they're working out, they're getting stronger, they're conditioning, and then during the off season when the coaches can't be with the player, it's always Mike Bradley's job to see to it that they're out there conditioning, lifting weights, and getting ready for the next basketball season. Uh, it's an interesting interview, too. You can't, I can't wait till Mike Bradley tells you how he has a bachelor's in chemistry and a master's in chemistry and I don't even know what the periodic table is, but he can tell us what it is, okay? That's our special guest this evening. Coach Leonard Hamilton will be here momentarily. They just finished practice. He's on his way to Glory Days here on Capitol Circle near Centerville Road. Florida State Athletics would like to thank Glory Days Grill in Tallahassee for their support of Seminole Athletics. That's why we're here. Glory Days Tallahassee, the home of inside Seminole basketball. Keep it right here. Keep it here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Well, the Noles are in first place in the ACC with that win over the Miami Hurricanes on Saturday afternoon down in uh, Coral Gables. And, Coach, congratulations. A huge win. And uh, uh, we got a streak going. got six in a row, the longest current streak of the ACC. And uh, we're winning games by huge margins. I mean, one point, <laughs> one point, one point. My goodness. <laughs> well, you know, I always tease you about uh, uh, ACC blowouts. But there's no doubt that this league is getting closer in proximity to each other. Uh, a lot of parity in our league. Um, this, it, some people are misjudging, saying that because the perennial powers are not dominating like they used to be and other people are in those positions, that something's wrong with the league and, it is, and it's down, that this is the new ACC. You're going to find that as we move through the remainder of the season and in the years to come, you're going to have different teams rotating in and out of the number one, two, and three spot. You're going to have different teams being, being dominant in the ACC, just like it is other conferences. So this is... This is a new day in the ACC. The new bloods are in first place. <laughs> the, the new bloods, Florida State, Miami, in first place. And, and Coach, you, you talk about the ACC as a whole. And there's a down, is it up? I, you take those three guards of Miami, I wouldn't trade them for any three guards of the country. They're as good as I've seen all season long. You take the five starters for Duke, there's not a better team on the court than the Duke Blue Devils, except maybe the Florida State Seminoles. <laughs> uh, we, we sort of proved that. But is, is it sort of a, a little, I don't know if irony is the word, but last week, Florida State beat Duke, and Miami beat North Carolina. Tobacco Road got turned flip-flop over. And I, I don't know if that's happened before, where the state of Florida has knocked off Tobacco Road in one week. Well, I, I was on a press conference earlier today, and we were talking about the, whether in ACC ranks, and what I, my comment was that whoever plays Wake Forest, North Carolina State, <clears throat> Notre Dame in the NCAA tournament, we'll find out how good the ACC is. Those are outstanding teams. And I guarantee you, uh, at the end of the year, the ACC is always standing in its rightful place somewhere close to the top. Yeah, you know, and Coach, you make a good point because uh, early season losses, you know, Notre Dame, they stub their toe early. A couple of losses, they fall be below 500. All of a sudden, they're one of the hottest teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference right now. Notre Dame, like you say, nobody wants to play Notre Dame. We struggle and, and get beat soundly by Purdue, a very good Purdue team. But then we come back and we're playing much better than we did in the month of November, December. And, and I think Florida State's going to be a huge, a very tough out come tournament time. Well, analytics has taken over, the statistical analytical evaluations have taken over uh, how you perceive teams in, in, in the 2000, 2022. Now, you, you got to take under consideration, for instance, as it relates to Florida State. We're basically a new team. We have, we've had some injuries to some, some of our veterans. Uh, we have seven newcomers in our program. They're adjusting, uh, trying to make the – trying to learn our system offensively and defensively, trying to learn how to utilize their skills and talents with their new teammates. And so we're in a transition period. We, we're going and developing. And it's, and it's very challenging for youngsters to get in sync this early in the season. But you're going to see a lot of teams start progressing as their players become more familiar. And, and we are one of those teams that hopefully – we continue to keep getting better and better. Leonard, speaking of new players, and let's talk about the Duke victory uh, came uh, last Tuesday night here at the Donald L. Tucker Center. Speaking of new bloods and new players on this basketball team, Leonard, uh, Naheem McLeod. Naheem McLeod has a career-high uh, nine points, and he's the seven foot. He's the 
Ty's the tallest player in the, in the history of Florida State basketball, but he seems to come getting better and better. All the bigs seem to be getting really developing into really good basketball players of the paint. Well, in the past, we've always had veterans uh, leading the way, and we've had our, new, our newcomers were kind of mingling in, and we were rotating those guys in uh, as, as the season progressed. Now we look out on the court, we play against Duke, and I got five first-year players out on the court. And that's a big adjustment, but that's who we are. Um, we, we still look a team that's growing and developing. By no means have we reached our potential. And I guess that's a positive thing about our team. We still got a lot of room for growth. Yeah, Naheem McLeod uh, got the start against Duke. In fact, he started the last three ball games along with – now, he's not a fresh, but he's, I, I believe his eligibility is a junior. Uh, no, Redshirt sophomore. Not really. Not really. Not, not really. really because he's only played one year in college, and that was the COVID year. Yeah, the COVID so, year. So okay. he really could be a freshman. So in, he, in technically, a fr I'm going to change my, my scoring card then. There I'm going to make go. him a <laughs> red shirt super freshman. But he started along with John Butler, who was a true freshman, uh, against Duke. Now, you started two true freshmen against arguably the best team at, to that point in the conference. Well, that's who we are, you know, and we're going to have some growing pains. We, we're going to have some hiccups along the way, and, and uh, I wish we could get out of that that mode of what they call the ACC blowout team, the one and two and three-point victories. Uh, but they're victories, and we'll take those anywhere we can get them. Yeah, wins are wins. Our fans watching on ABC 27 seeing Florida State playing the Duke Blue. That was big Naheem McLeod right there. <laughs> Number two, he's a big, tall guy. John Butler, seven foot tall. He looks short next to him. And Coach, you know that ball game, uh, Caleb Mills, what it took charge of. Raekwon Evans played an outstanding game distributing and uh, finding a little alley-oop dunk right there before we – Came back to you on set. Well, there's no doubt that we have different guys stepping up and taking taking their their, their rightful place. I mean, we win games by committee, mm -hmm. and I've said that all along. But there's no other season more evident than what we're doing now. Each game, someone else steps up and gives us a big lift. In that ball game, Caleb Mills led us in scoring, and the coach. It just seems like to this point in the season, when we need a basket in the worst way, somehow, some way, uh, Caleb Mills has something to do with us getting a basket. Well, there's no doubt that he's probably a little more farther, he's a little farther along than some of our newcomers, uh, but we need more guys stepping in and, and being the go-to guy. We need more guys taking over their, those roles so we, we'll get back and really truly win games by committed. It's very difficult for one guy to lead you all the time. We hopeful that as we go through the remainder of the season, you're going to see other guys have more confidence in, in, in their roles on our team and be as productive as, as, as Caleb has been. Another player in that Duke game, and uh, he shows his experience. He's one of the most experienced Seminoles, and that's Anthony Polite. He's a leader on this team, and he plays almost every position you want him to play, Coach. He has nine points. Every game you look at the stats, the box score, he's got 9.7 rebounds, 8.9 rebounds, a couple of steals thrown in there. He, in fact, he may be our team leader in steals. But Anthony Polite is one of the older guys that you rely on to get those young guys uh, cohesiveness, and if that's the word, I don't know, but get them playing together as a team. No, I make up words all the time. Uh, well, cohesiveness, uh, that's just the top of my mind. <laughs> but uh, you, count on, you count on Anthony Polite but Anthony, and Raekwon Evans. A Anthony is an outstanding shooter along with Wyatt Wilkes. But you notice they have not been getting as many good looks. That's because now their roles have changed and people are giving them a lot of attention out of respect for the, 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 the shooting ability that they've shown that they're capable of consistently shooting the ball well in, in, in the past. So now they're not getting as many look, good looks, but now as the team starts gelling and we start ha showing that we have more guys that are capable of contributing, you're going to see those guys getting more good op open looks and yeah. they'll knock those shots down. Anthony Polite plays the one, the two, the three, probably the four, and could play the five, and uh, he is having uh, tremendous success in this his final year with the Florida State Seminoles. Planet Fitness is a proud partner of the Florida State Seminoles at Planet Fitness, gain access to a clean and spacious club with tons of equipment in the one and only judgment-free zone. And uh, all for just $10 a month. Go Knowles. That's Planet Fitness as we enjoy highlights on ABC 27, FSU beating Duke by one in overtime. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Days and we're talking Florida State basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. Earlier in the program, I mentioned that FSU had won its 13th consecutive overtime game, which is an NCAA record. And now, Coach, I'm going to throw another NCAA record out at you, and it involves you. Are you ready for this? 
I'm ready. All right. With the, <laughs> with the win over Miami or the win over uh, Duke this past uh, Tuesday night, Leonard Hamilton won his 55th game against a ranked team when his team was not ranked. No other coach in college basketball has done that. How about a round of applause for head coach Leonard Hamilton, winning his coach in the history of Florida State basketball, and uh, another accolade from the NCAA. 55 wins over ranked teams when our team isn't ranked. You sort of sneak up on them. Sneak up on them. <laughs> well, I've, I've been coaching a long time, so I think that has a little something to do with it. I'm not real sure. I didn't even know anything about that. Well, thanks, for, yeah. thanks for the info. Well, that's, <laughs> I just throw that stuff out. You know, we've got, we've got a great TV audience, a great radio audience on the Learfield IMG Seminole Radio Network, and um, I'm going to throw it out. 55 wins over ranked teams when your team has. Now, uh, you add the teams that we have beaten that have been ranked when your teams are ranked. I'll get that figure for the next show. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll go deeper into the uh, in, into the books. Well, let's let's just worry about the next game. No, that's true. That's Georgia Georgia Tech on oh uh, Wednesday, a nine o'clock game on Wednesday. Coach, we have we have a great audience here. Some folks are here just to eat great food at Glory Days, and a lot of folks are here to hear what you have to say about your basketball team. And we have a uh, a member of the audience that has a question for you. Go ahead. Is our audience ready? Are you ready for? Hey, he's ready. All right. I got go my ahead. main man Clark fire, here. Fire away. Game. Fire away, Clark. What you got Clark. Yeah. Hey, Coach, I have to. I tell you thanks so much i'm from miami so beating hurricanes twice in a short period of time i'm loving it i make sure that they know down there in miami who won uh my question is is uh, i know we were real strong at home when we played the tuck uh and it's a different kind of preparation that you have to do when you play on the road so i was just wondering what kind of different coaching uh, methods do you use when you play on the road as opposed at home well, you would like to think that uh, you can maintain that same level of focus uh, and, and get the energy from the crowd that, like you do when you're home, but it's just not possible. But we don't make very many adjustments, to be very honest with you. We just try to, the, the, to really try to be who we are a little better than who we normally are, if that makes any sense to you. You know, we have a defensive system uh, that we very seldom uh, vary from. We're tweaking in relation to uh, the, the, the defensive schemes that uh, our opponents have. But uh, officially, we're who we are. We try to be consistent with, with, with how we uh, address and how we uh, develop our team and how we play to the strengths of our, our, our team and our team and try to stay away from our weaknesses. Um, mentally, we just try to be as focused as possible because we realize it's challenging, especially for new players going on the road and being in that, those, those environments. We, we, try to, we spend more time coaching their minds and their spirits than we do their bodies in those type of situations because – a lot of it's growing. When you have as many new players as we have, it's a little challenging for them, you know, to tune out all the distractions that being on the road will, will, will do for you. So uh, the answer to your question is uh, what we try to do is be consistent with our approach regardless of whether we're at home or on the road. Well, it's working. It's <laughs> definitely working. <laughs> <laughs> all right, go no Carl, thank, thank you. you very much for the uh, question. That's our fan question of the week here at Glory Days. Folks enjoying good boy. I smell the food. I got my order in. I can't wait. To, I gotta wait. <laughs> Coach, I got to wait. Oh, my, another 35 minutes before I grab some of that glory days. Coach, we beat Duke by one and then uh, in overtime, and then we have to come back and play a midweek game, a very uh, unusual game. We uh, tip off at 12 noon at the Tucker Center on a Thursday, and it's not the holidays. And, and I, I tipped my head a little earlier about the fan. We had over 2,000 fans attend that ball game and cheer us as a victory over the University of North Florida. Well, that was a very challenging experience for us this whole week, playing four games in eight days. <clears throat> and at halftime of the Miami game, we saw kind of a glazed look over our guys' eyes. They had given a, a tremendous effort in the first half. I hope that we don't ever have to put ourselves in that position again where we're playing eight games, I mean four games in eight days. It taxes our body. We, we basically kind of walked through some of our preparations. We tried not to tax their bodies that much during that period. It was extremely challenging to get through that week with, with, with four victories. It was a tremendous challenge for our players. The day's practice, it was a little long, but it was not very physical, demanding on them. Uh, we walked through a lot of stuff. We, we had a long film session trying to uh, debrief from the, the Miami game and prepare for the Georgia Tech game. Our guys seem to be real focused. We're in a very vulnerable period right now as we grow through being ranked number one in the league because now you get that bullseye oh, yeah. on, your, on, your, on your shirt and everybody feels like they can pad their resume 
by playing against the number one team in the league, we got to be stronger and more focused as we move forward. Yeah, what you're saying, Coach, is uh, Florida State now is getting the Duke treatment by opposing teams in the Atlantic Coast Conference. We're getting the best shot. And, you know, Miami gave us their best shot twice, and we still beat them by, what, two points combined. Uh, you mentioned the, 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 the conditioning. That was four games in eight days, but that was our third game in five days, Coach, third game in five. And it did look like we lost a little energy there in the second There's half. There's no doubt that we were physically exhausted for the most part uh, going into the second half, and I thought mentally uh, it was more than anything else, and I thought we made some, some fatigue decisions, and we didn't quite have our legs, but we were able to get away with a victory, and that's all that counts now. Leonard, it's, it's tough to, to not talk about wins over Duke and, and wins over Miami, an arch rival. We've been playing Miami since 1950, but uh, that game in between the North Florida victory, uh, a young man, a true freshman, uh, had a career high in, in that ballgame. Matthew Cleveland, 21 points, 10 rebounds. It was his first 2010 game in his young career, and he became the first Seminole, first freshman since uh, Chris Singleton back way back to have a 2010 double-double as a freshman for Florida State, a tremendous performance by that young man. Well, there's no doubt that he's growing and improving with each game. He's extremely, he has extremely high IQ, basketball IQ. He has a high motor. He plays extremely hard. He's one of our better defenders. Uh, and he's really, really always ready for the moment. He's a winner in every, every sense of the word. He's a guy who I think is going to get better and better. We're going home to his hometown to play against yeah. uh, Georgia Tech, and we need to try to make sure we get a victory just for him. Yeah, and uh, I have a feeling we'll get a little bit of zone defense from uh, the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. That's, uh, I think that's Coach Pastor's patented. I mean, he's like Syracuse. That zone that he runs is tough to, to run an offense against. But when Matthew Cleveland uh, has a double-double, then Caleb Mills has 21 points, and uh, they add up for 42 of the ball game. You said, tend to overlook some other things. But Tenor and Gome, Tenor and Gome has been injured more than he's been healthy. He's our big seven-foot kid. And uh, he got his first extended playing time, and he delivered with 13 big points against North Florida. Well, we're having some issues with, with, in, in the injury department. There's no doubt about that. M Malik uh, has, uh, has an ankle issue, and, and, and Tenor has, has, has had his ankles issues. So uh, we're we just a team that's just trying to find ways to win <laughs> in spite of the injuries that we're having. But most teams are having those issues at you know, this time of year. And you just got to find a way to play yourself to win. That was Tenor's first game since the injury. He had missed 11 games too early, played a couple, then injured again. And uh, good to see that big fella out on the court. And you sort of rotate those big guys in there with uh, McLeod and, and Gome and, and Ballard, uh, all seven foot tall or even taller. And Florida State, in that ballgame, Coach, uh, with our height, we dominated the glass. We forced a lot of turnovers. And uh, you had a chance to play an awful lot of players. I think all but one player scored in that ballgame. Well, that's played, like, that that we, it was a the, um, rescheduled game. And it came at a bad time. Yeah. We also rescheduled uh, the Boston College game. And that puts us in a little bit of a one-day turnaround situation as we play against them. I think we play Duke, and then we leave the next day and, and go to Boston and play that game on the road. So that's, that's what the pandemic has brought to us. And uh, those are situations we just have to try to work our way through. That's something you try to avoid is back-to-back -back road games, particularly in a short window, and a Saturday game at Duke and a Monday game at Boston College. Oh, those are two tough venues to go in and get wins. Well, we're ready for it, right, Coach? We're ready. Right. Let's just worry about <laughs> Georgia Tech. <laughs> Georgia Tech is, oh, you, yeah, Georgia Tech is Wednesday <laughs> at 9 o'clock. We're talking Florida State basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. You know that. That's how you found us on ABC 27. You found us on your radio on the Seminole Learfield IMG Seminole Radio Network, and uh, we're glad you joined us for this Monday evening. We're here every Monday night talking with the head coach, and we invite you to come out to Glory Days and uh, spend some time with some fellow of Seminoles and uh, rub some shoulders and talk some Seminole hoops on Monday nights, particularly in this cool time of the year in January. Simply IOA is giving you the chance to win Seminoles courtside seats. Prizes include courtside seats for you and three friends to an FSU home basketball game versus an ACC opponent in February, and that's not far away. Enter now at Simply IOA. That's one word, simplyioa.com. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Great days talking Florida State basketball with head coach 
Lynn and Hamilton. Every week we have a special guest, and, and uh, tonight, no different on this Monday Night at Glory Days. For those of you watching on ABC 27, listening on the uh, uh, Learfield IMG Seminole Radio Network, let me introduce to you uh, Mr. Michael Bradley, who is our strength and conditioning coach at Florida State University Basketball. Big round of applause. He's got, he's got his hands full. I mean, conditioning all year round. And, and I made a comment in the, in the opening of the show, Mike, that you probably, you probably spend more time with the basketball players than the coaches do. It's, it's year round, and uh, the way we train, we, we try to get as much supervision on our players as I can. So most of it's one-on-one. -on -one and so you get to know people pretty well over the course of a career. You've been doing this for 30 years, and uh, a lot of that time has been spent with Leonard Hamilton. Leonard's been the head coach at Florida State for 20 years, and you've been right alongside with Leonard. You joined his staff when he came to Tallahassee, Florida. Correct. And then uh, I also was with him for four years, I believe, in Miami. In Miami also. Now, I, I got a question, and we've known each other for a long time. And <laughs> the question that I have is, you're a, uh, are you not a West Coast kid? You went to school, got a master's and a BA from California school, San Diego State in uh, Santa Barbara, I guess. But uh, how, how did you end up on the East Coast in Tallahassee or in Miami, for that matter? It was uh, probably a typical pathway for a lot of people pursuing coaching. You go where the opportunities are. And then uh, when Coach Hamilton presented me with the opportunity to go down to Miami, it, it, it fit at the right time. And then we've got here, and uh, we love North Florida. My, my wife and son are here. Uh, we love this community. We, we, we live in Wakulla County. We love the people down there, um, the culture and everything about it. So I, I had a chance to, to meet your family in of the mo one of the most unusual places. One of my favorite places on the planet is Wakulla Springs. And Ann and I were down there. We ran into you and uh, your son and your wife. And uh, your wife's name is Tara. Your son is uh, uh, Gar. Gar. Yeah. Okay. And uh, he t you told me a story that uh, he loves jumping off that dive board at the Wakala Springs. To me, that water is ice cold, but the kids seem to like it, and uh, you spend a lot of time down at the springs. It's ice cold, <laughs> and uh, to me, that is a very high jump. I'm, yeah, not, oh, I'm yeah. not good with heights, mm -hmm. and he forced me to confront something in myself I didn't want to confront. Uh, so did so now I do it. You yeah. did jump. But did not want to uh -huh. initially. I stay away from that dive board. That's for the kids. Now, let me talk to you about strength and conditioning. It's two different things, I would think, but they intertwine with what you do with student athletes is what comes first, strength or conditioning? The, the, they, they intertwine uh, in the sense that the strength is a general phenomenon, uh, but because of the way that we strength train, there is a conditioning component to it. Uh, we go through it at a rapid pace, and we believe that conditioning component that we get out of the strength program has a bleed over effect to the court, then the court has a specific conditioning component. It's not a general phenomenon like strength. It's a specific phenomenon. And that has to come mostly through skill work, working with their position coach, working with Coach Hamilton, mm -hmm. playing at game speed. Um, so that, that's what transfers. The strength is, is more of a general phenomenon. The condition is more of a specific phenomenon. It's an amazing thing in the, tw in the 20, year 2022, strength and conditioning is uh, very important in the game of basketball, and that's been true for about the last 30, 30 40 years. Uh, when, I played, when I played junior college basketball, you wanted to stay away from the weight room. The, th the theory was you got too stiff if you lifted weights. Nobody wanted to lift weights back in the day, not even the great players. But nowadays, if you don't lift weights, you can't compete at the level we compete at. Well, and, you know, I think one person who kind of broke the mold on that was uh, Dave Collins. If you listen to him talk about what he did uh, as a player, he was one of the first and uh, kind of one of the proponents of it and kind of Let, open people's eyes up to it. Yeah. Yeah, and, and, and Dave played 1969 through 1971 for the summer. So that's going back in the day. So Dave sort of broke the mold. And by the way, Dave Cowens, if you're a Florida State basketball fan, you know Dave Cowens. Dave Cowan's uh, a draft pick by the Boston Celtics out of Florida State University. He, all, he was the rookie of the year and most valuable player in his first year in the NBA. How good was he? And I, Another Dave Cowan story, I won't take up your time, but I, I, I had the chance to interview uh, Dave at a Boston College football game. He has a home up in Boston, one down in Florida. And I said, how did you – he averaged like 19 rebounds a game, almost 20 rebounds a game for a career. That's un, unheard of. And I said, how did you get so many rebounds? He said, well, he says, it's always good to play on a team that can't shoot real well. <laughs> and so that's why he, that's his story, and I'm sticking with it. Now, as far as conditioning, off-season off, off conditioning, how, ma how many days a year do student athletes uh, try to stay in good condition? We go nearly year-round. There are natural breaks that 
happen with the uh, semester system during the summer. Players here during, stay here during the summer. They train year-round during the summer. And uh, the way that the summer sessions and, and the break between the spring and the fall semesters, those allow us to have a, a built-in time off as we need it. So other than that, when we're in school, we're training. Now, when a student athlete, now we got so many freshmen, it's hard to keep track of. No, let it keep on all the new guys on this team. He looks on the court. There's three, four freshmen on the court. But uh, when when they enroll, when they come to school, do you sit down with them and here's the program that we're going to work on, on on your strength? We want you to be this weight. We want you to add some weight. We want you to lose some weight. Do you sit down with each and every freshman and have a program that they will live with for the rest of their career? Yeah. So. Every person that comes in here goes through the exact same teaching process. We have a way of uh, strength training is, is, is like basketball or any other sport. It has to be coached. It has to be uh, supervised. It has to be coached meticulously with specific instruction. And so when our players come here, they, they, they first learn how to do one repetition properly. We don't do anything until we know how to do that. We learn how to train at what we think is the appropriate effort level, which is very, very high. We don't do anything else until we learn how to do that. And then from there, we build on that. We learn new exercises, new concepts. But everything for us is a fundamental th thing. We're always going back to fundamentals. It's always about how we perform exercise and the effort level that we train at. And all of our players do the same thing when that ends. Mike Bradley is our uh, strength and conditioning coach for Florida State basketball. Uh, he operates out of that basketball facility right adjacent to the Donald L. Tucker Civic Center. He works with our athletes daily, gets them ready, and gets them in shape. And uh, uh, let me ask you one more question before I let you go. Uh, uh, Chris Culp over here said it's time to go to break. It's time to go to break. But one more question for Mike Bradley is, who is the first guy that wants to get into the weight room on this Seminole basketball team? Is there a guy that you just can't keep out of the weight room? Oh, we got 20 of them. We got we got a training mindset on our team. They love to train. Uh, if I could show you some photos or videos of us on the road or in the NCAA tournament in the bubble and figuring out ways to train, uh, we got a really neat group of guys. That, you, li yeah. you, you lift weights and everybody wants to be in the weight room first? Yes. That's because you're such a nice guy, Mike. I it just is. want to come visit you, huh? It is, and I'm a great cook, and I bring food in. <laughs> food is always important to student athletes. Mike Bradley, strength and conditioning coach, Florida State. How about a round of applause here at Glory Day? Thank you very much, Mike. Let me know the next time you're diving off that board, and I want to see video of it, okay? Down at Wakulla Springs. The, uh, here's Chris giving me the notes. <laughs> With zero sugar, and now even more delicious, is the new Coca-Cola Zero Sugar, the best Coke ever. Find out for yourself. I think it might be. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Glory days on a Monday night, a little cool outside. Winter weather here, you would expect in late January. Florida State basketball is the subject on Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. And uh, coach, before we uh, uh, talk about that huge win over Miami, uh, we just had Mike Bradley on, and Mike has been with you. Speaking of Miami, Mike uh, joined your staff at the University of Miami for four years and then came up with you to Tallahassee, Florida, as the strength and conditioning coach of Florida State University. Uh, you and Mike go back a long, long way. Well, we've been together now, looks like it's over 20 years. I can yeah. guarantee you that one. When I was looking for a weight training conditioning coach, I looked all over the country because Mike is a specialist in what you call high intensity weight training conditioning. This weight lifting differs from sport to sport. And he specializes in the type of system that I feel that, that fits what basketball players need to, need to be doing. You know, you have uh, uh, football players lift yeah. a certain system, uh, uh, baseball players and swimmers, but Mike really, really, um, he really does a great job as, with, with basketball players. And, you, and he, has, it, he has prevented a lot of injuries. Uh, he has the ability to, to communicate with our players. They love going in. He, he makes it fun for them because no one likes to go into the weight room and, and work <laughs> as hard as they have to work. But they, they enjoy working with Mike Bradley. Well, that's what I asked about. The last question I asked Michael was, uh, uh, who's the first player that wants to get in that weight room first? He said, all 20, all 20, <laughs> Coach. Now you say, oh, I may have to ask Mike a little bit more about that. But anyway, Mike Bradley, strength and conditioning coach, has been with Coach Ham for uh, over 20 years, and he is at work right now. Probably He's probably going back to the way. He said he also is a good cook, and he brings some food to the weight room. Is that, <laughs> is that important, Coach? Well, there's no 
doubt that he specializes in all different types of uh, foods that he likes. He loves to cook, and he he allows us to sample a little bit of it once in a while. But see, I'm the kind of guy I don't like samples. No, you no. know what I mean. I like to eat what yeah. I said out. So uh, sometimes he brings me a little. Uh, not as much as I'd like to have. I don't want to tell him that. So the next time you tell him when he, when he brings in one of his bring dishes, some more. Yeah, bring, bring me an extra helper. Well, I'll guarantee you this, Coach, at Glory Days, you don't get a little bit. You get a bunch, okay? That's a good plug for Glory Days where we are Monday nights talking Florida State basketball. Coach, the Miami win. We go down to Miami. It was like a tale of two halves. I mean, we, we, we just can't miss in the first half. Uh, we lead by 24 points at halftime. And then in the second half, Miami can't miss. We turn the ball over. It became a one-point ball game, and they had a chance to win. How big was that victory over Miami? Well, it was very important because we ran out of gas, I think, the second half. Mm -hmm. You know, you could tell that we been, been a, we were a little leg-weary. Mm -hmm. A lot of our, our mistakes were fatigue mistakes. Uh, I, I didn't think we had the same level of energy that we had the first half. Uh, and, and Miami revved it up a little bit. The game meant an awful lot to them. And it got, it got very interesting there toward the end. And we just hung on for a victory. And I, I think you saw the best of what, how we could play. And you also saw the, the issues that challenged us from an execution standpoint that we got to get a little better at. They, they start pressing us. They start scrambling, trapping a little bit, um, making the game diff difficult for us you know, to execute in the half court. And we bought into it, sped ourselves up, tried to uh, play a little faster than what we should, turned the ball over and made the game a little too interesting for me. Yeah, 61-60 well, to 60 final score. It was the ninth consecutive win for Florida State over Miami, and that's the longest streak of victories in this series that dates back to 1950. Congratulations on a huge win over Miami. Let's dissect it a little further, Coach. Uh, we had two turnovers in the first half. We had 15 of the second half. Did they change their defensive scheme, put more pressure? They forced a huge number of turnovers. There's no doubt that uh, they did change their defensive schemes. They did a great job of trapping us a little bit in the half court, and, and I thought we got out of rhythm, became um, very cautious with the ball. Uh, we, we were attacking in the first half, and we became very tentative as a result of, of us having that big lead, trying to protect the league as opposed to still playing aggressive. But that was a great learning experience for us. I'm glad we won the game. We were able to point out some of the misgivings that we had during the game, and hopefully we'll, the next time we get in one of those situations uh, that we'll do a lot better. I would love to, <laughs> to come in at halftime always, but 24 points like ahead. Points. <laughs> that makes life a little easier for us. That's <laughs> a whole lot. But that's, so I think what you're saying is that uh, in the first half we were playing to win, the second half we were playing not to lose. Would that be – close to correct? I, no? I think that's what some of our players okay. said okay. Uh, in our team meeting today. The they thought they became a little too cautious. But that's part of the growing up process. That's part of the development. Uh, it's not all physical. That's part of the mentality that you got to grow in, the maturing that goes on with playing games with a, a bunch of inexperienced guys, first-year guys. Uh, but uh, hopefully uh, the most important thing, we got the W. We came home, gave them a Sunday off. And we had a very light practice today. 13 and 5, 6 and 2 of the Atlantic Coast Conference, number one in the standings in the ACC. Simply Iowa is giving you the chance to win Seminoles courtside seats. Prizes include courtside seats for you and three friends to an FSU home basketball game versus an ACC opponent in February. That's just around the corner. Enter at simplyioa.com slash Knowles. Coach, before we go to break. Uh, Malik Osborne played in that ball game. He did not play against the University of North Florida, and he's nursing an, a, a gimpy ankle, a hurt ankle. That really, I didn't realize how bad that ankle was until I saw him walking from the bus to the team charter plane to fly over Miami, and he got it out. He had eight big rebounds in that ball game, and was, was a big reason why we beat Miami. How's he doing? Well, obviously, any time you turn an ankle, uh, he's not doing any additional am damage to it. It's just one of those things that you have to go through. We try to rest him as much as possible. I've had several players you know, over the years that could play in games, but you didn't want to uh, fatigue them uh, with a lot of practices. And he's, he's been very instrumental to our team, gives us a tremendous leadership on and off the court. And, and he's, he's doing a real good job. He's just, he's just not as mobile as he has been in the past. Yeah, Malik Osborne, eight big rebounds, four of them offensive rebounds. And FSU's win over Miami, 61 to 60. We'll talk more about FSU's win over our arch rival in the ACC. But first, hey, Seminole fans, the Florida Department of Highway Safety and Motor Vehicles remind you to stay in the game and play by the rules. Texting and driving is against the law. One text takes your eyes off the road for about five seconds, and that's like driving uh, around a basketball arena with your eyes closed two times. 
times. To win while driving, you must focus, put it down, and focus on driving to arrive alive. Be safe out there. Don't text and drive. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Here we are talking Florida State basketball with Leonard Hamilton on a Monday night. Uh, don't be a stranger if you'd like to get back glory days and spend some time face-to-face -face with a head coach. Come on down. We're here from uh, 7 o'clock till 8 o'clock every Monday talking Florida State basketball. And uh, for those of you watching at ABC 27, hope you're enjoying the show. We've got some more highlights to show and a lot of conversation about FSU hoops. And uh, those listening on the Learfield Seminole Radio Network, welcome back to our show. This Monday, we talked just a little bit about the wins over the three teams we beat in a five-day period, Duke in overtime by two, Miami or excuse Miami by one on Saturday and wrapped around a 13-point win over North Florida. But, Coach, uh, back to that Miami game, and it's something I, I, I wanted to get in before we went to break, but uh, Anthony Polite, we watched Anthony had a huge first half and uh, got us off to a great start. He had 15 points in the ball game. And uh, after the game, I asked him, I said, you, you never lost to Miami in your career. He said, nope, never lost to Miami. He's 8-0 <laughs> against the Miami Hurricanes, 8-0 against Miami. Anthony Polite. And I saw his dad, Michael Polite, who played at Florida State, 1988, 89, 90s, 91, in that area, played three years for us. Michael was at the ball game. I saw him after the game, and he was so proud of what his son and the Seminoles had done. I'll bet you Michael Polite didn't beat Miami eight times. I'll bet you his dad did not. Well, we didn't play Miami a lot back in the day, you know? Well, Miami has really improved, and a lot of the games could have gone either way. Uh, it's been a, a very hard-fought series. You know, and I, I mean, even when I was at the University of Miami, I, I always thought that the the the, the series, the competitive rivalry with North Florida State and Miami was a good, clean, wholesome rivalry that that really was inspiring, void of a lot of issues, but extremely competitive. And uh, I think our games have been the same way. Well, they certainly have. And uh, Florida State now with uh, what nine straight wins over Miami, we sort of extended the string of victories over the Hurricanes. And uh, again, it's a tremendous rivalry. Coach, it doesn't matter if it's Baseball, football, basketball, tiddlywinks, volleyball. So, oh, speaking of swim, team, our swim team beat Miami last weekend. How about that? And they were at the basketball game cheering on the Seminoles. Did you hear them cheering behind you, Coach? <laughs> no, I, I, I missed them. When the game starts, I kind of tune, tune everything else out. <laughs> that, that's true. And uh, they, they made a lot of noise. They had just beaten Miami, and they had another another swim meet coming up this weekend. So they stayed in town, and they came to the, they came to the Watsco Center to cheer on. Their favorite basketball team, that's the Florida State Seminoles. We've played three games in five days. we got the fourth game in eight days coming up. And uh, while we have a moment, Coach, let's talk about the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. They uh, stubbed their toe early. Uh, you look at their record, you say, wow, uh, they're in the bottom tier of the Atlantic Coast Conference. But this team looks like they got the second leading score in the league. I think he's second leading score in the league, DeVoe. And they got a kid named Usher that sort of took us out to the shed in the uh, ACC championship. We owe them one. They beat us for the ACC championship last year. There's no doubt that. Any team you play in the ACC, especially on the road, will be extremely challenging to you. And uh, I think I've always said 70% of most of, of all the games in the ACC are decided by uh, four points or less. And so you have to be ready. You can't worry about where a team is ranked uh, in, in the league, in the standings, because if you don't go in mentally, emotionally, and physically ready, you know, somebody can give, put a hat on your head and show you what a door is. But that's the way it is in the ACC. This is an important victory for us. Uh, obviously, even though we are sitting in a pretty good position, uh, we have 12 more games to go, and, and we need yeah. to really, really uh, have a finish very strong. Yeah, and, and uh, w winning games on the road, if you could steal a one or two on the road, you're going to stay above 500 in the league. That's always been the story in, in the ACC. you got to steal one or two on the road, and uh, we've had good road success. We beat North Carolina State on the road. Uh, we beat Miami on the road. We, we have had some success on the road this season against ACC foes. Well, un unfortunately, you have to, I mean, fortunately, you have to just stay focused on, on what the task you have at hand. And we, we understand that, that this is an important game for us. Now that we are number one in the league, it's an important game for, for uh, uh, Georgia Tech. We just can't let it be more important to Georgia Tech than it is to us. Farm Bureau Insurance is giving you and three friends the chance to win courtside seats for the Knowles take on NC State March the 5th. Prize includes courtside seats, a one-night hotel stay, and Knowles gear. Enter at KnowlesContest.com today. Farm Bureau Insurance, giving you and three friends the chance to win courtside seats. 
when the Knolls take on North Carolina State. Keep it right here on the Seminole Sports Network from Learfield. Days talking on a Monday night with head coach Leonard Hamill and inside Seminole basketball. Don't miss the show on ABC 27 on the Seminole uh, radio network. Seminole Athletics would like to thank Vistar Credit Union for their support of FSU Hoops. Vistar, do good. Bank better. And coach, before we go, FSU Georgia Tech uh, Wednesday, and then we play Virginia. It's the week of the Texters, huh? Georgia Tech and Virginia Tech on Saturday at 3 o'clock. Well, there's no doubt that we need our fans to be in the stand helping us this weekend. But right now, we've got to concentrate totally on Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech to uh, Wednesday night at 9 o'clock. Coach, before we go, it's Coaches versus Cancer Week. You will have the sneakers on. You have them all on, almost all the time. It's awareness for the fight against cancer. No doubt about that. And it's a worthy cause and raising money for research is outstanding. Hopefully, we'll, we'll end up defeating this dreaded disease. Let's beat cancer and beat Georgia Tech all at the same time. Thank you very much for joining us. On this edition of Inside Seminole Basketball with head coach Leonard Hamilton. For Chris Culp, our producer, and Dave Falaski in our studio, I'm Gene Deckeroff saying good night and go Knowles. <laughs>